I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. But today I'm going to be telling my story of traveling from Belize City back to Leon. So I know we did the Leon to Belize just a couple days ago, but honestly, the travel days are kind of interesting and there's a lot of stuff to cover and information in some cases. So I'm going to be covering that today to take you back and hopefully get a little bit of footage from the trip, but it's a little bit interesting and a bit different than my trip in the other direction. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. I started my day in Belize City. I got up at about six o'clock this morning because I had to get up and pack, shower, get dressed, do all that stuff, get breakfast and travel. And it's just a lot going on. So I got up on the early side. I probably could have slept in a bit longer. Honestly, I worry a lot about getting to uh, my flights. I have missed flights before because the airport, this was in the UK, uh, decided to close check-in hours before the flight. And even though we were pl in plenty of time to make the flight, they closed the desk and we were left behind. And it cost us a lot of money and it was very stressful. We were younger then, like it'd be easier to deal with now, but it still was a big mess. And especially when you're doing a big travel day, one miss can cascade throughout the day and cause a disaster. So I really didn't want to have that happen. I do my best to just be at the airport ahead of time, Probably I do this way too much, especially in like Latin America where they're super relaxed about these things. There's almost always a way to get to your gate even at the very last second. I've never had a time where I was actually in any danger of missing a flight whatsoever. It's completely different. They don't do this closing the desk thing. But I was extra worried today because I'm flying on Tropicare but operated by TAG. And anytime you have a flight operated by one company but ticketing through another, uh, you always have this bit of risk of miscommunications or problems. And the ticket said that I had to check in before two hours before the flight, because at two hours before the flight, they were going to close the check-in. Normally they open check-in two hours before the flight. But this is Belize, so one, they do things their own way, and two, it's an English-speaking country, so the chances that the ticket said something wrong in English was extremely low, so I was really worried about this. We'll get to what happened in a second. And so I started my day at 6 a.m. I got up, got completely dressed, got packed, took my shower, did all that, and then went and had breakfast at about seven, like as early as they had opened up for breakfast, had my breakfast at the hotel. I'm staying at a BNB, and b and then uh, waited for my ride. Now, he was a little bit late. We were arranging around eight o'clock, took him to a little bit closer to 830, which is pushing me quite a bit because we wanted to go to the office and do some things. But at 830, we went, we got coffee. We found this cute little coffee shop in Belize City. Uh, I don't know its name. It didn't have a logo that made it obvious what its name was. The whole place was just like a little house with a wall around it. You had to, you totally had to know it was there or you would never guess there was a coffee shop. They had excellent coffee, had good looking pastries. So I'm flying today. So I don't want to eat sugary stuff or much of anything. So I just got coffee and then went to our office in Belize City because I actually haven't had a chance to be like in the office while I was here. It was a very fast trip. Uh, went in and, and hung out in the office for a little while. We called the airlines and they were like, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. So I felt a lot better that we had talked to someone. But still, I like to get to the airport on the early side. So we got there uh, at about 9.40, which is right as they were going to close. And of course, they had it backwards. It was that you needed to check in after 9.40, not before 9.40. So the whole thing was a rush for absolutely no reason because they had screwed up the tickets. But remember, if you watched the episode two days ago when I got to Aurora in Guatemala, I said, oh yeah, I'm all good. I've got my ticket. And they're like, no, you don't. And you have to go do this check-in and do all this extra stuff. And it created this panic not a big panic, but it created a little bit of a panic because all the information was wrong and they hadn't given me the right stuff and I had to do a few things. They took care of it. It was no big deal. If you haven't seen that episode, totally easy to deal with, but it, it just things can go wrong, right? And especially on a little flight like this where you must check your luggage, there's no way for me to carry it on. So that requires that you get there a little bit earlier. If you're just doing carry-ons, you can often walk on at the last second, especially in Latin America, but with checked luggage, there's just a certain amount of time that has to be given for it to get on the plane. So I was trying to make sure I got that. Once I had dropped the bag, we knew we had loads of time. So Alex and I, who had driven me to the airport, hung out for almost an hour and just sat out in one of the lounges before I went through security. Because once you're through security, you're basically ready to go. However, this is a very complicated airport, even though it's absolutely tiny. This is Belize City. This is the international airport in Belize, the one that basically you're going to use for everything if you're coming in or out of the country of Belize, because the whole population is centered around Belize City, even more so than like London is in England. Uh, 
so once I finally went through with only like 45 minutes to my flight, I went ahead and went in through security uh, and the airport is tiny. So that should make it easy. And when I checked in, they said, you'll be at gate 10. And that was correct, but once you got in, you have the board that says where all the flights are, and my flight was the one flight that did not have a gate listed. But other flights were listed at my gate at exactly the time that we were supposed to be going, which leads me to believe that maybe we were being changed to another gate and that the information I've been given was out of date. Just like when we were in uh, Mazatlan not that long ago, the flights to where we needed to go to Mexico City were listed as being at a different gate and they had all the signage wrong. And if you didn't ask, you would have gotten on the wrong place or they would, you would have just missed your flight because they had everything labeled incorrectly and just didn't bother to update it and didn't bother to tell anyone. It was a total mess. So I was really worried here because Belize is a little bit disorganized just in general. So I got in, I looked around, I found gate 10. I had lots of time before my flight, so I wasn't worried. So I just kept walking back and checking the flights and coming back. It's worth noting that the seats in Belize airport are completely just park benches. They don't have like normal airport seats. Nothing in it feels like an airport. It feels like park benches in an outdoor market, except if you're indoors. It's really weird. Plus, Tropic Air, all of their flights are little Cessna planes. It doesn't give you the most confidence. Actually, they look kind of cute, but I, my wife would not fly on one. She would not be able to handle it. It's very slow travel. Uh, so the whole thing has just a very different vibe than you're expecting from most airports. While I was there, I did go shopping and I did get a Belize Belican beer hat, which you'll see on the show at some point. Uh, so then I, I, I eventually it just got too close to boarding time. Like we're well after the listed boarding time um, by like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So I went and talked to the gate and I'm like, there's been no boarding for Guatemala. There's no flight. There's no plane for Guatemala. There's no sign that says Guatemala and Guatemala is not on the board yet. And they're like, yeah, you're at the right gate. Just wait here. I'm like, Okay, so I just sit there and they randomly walk up to people and go, oh, your flight's here, as if you had to check in with them. And the only announcement was if they recognized you and asked you to get on the plane. So this is really stressful because there's they don't have a sign. They don't have any sign. I'm not saying it's the wrong sign. They don't have a screen to say what flight is boarding from gate 10. Other gates have them, but not 10. And the main sign never said gate 10 for this flight. It just was never listed. But so many other flights, there was never not a line going through gate 10. I believe that Tropic Air simply has that gate and everything you book through top, Tropic Air, regardless of its time, just goes out through that gate. It is such a mess. So we were supposed to board at about 8.45 and at 9.40, which is already, the flight was already supposed to have taken off. It still says on time, no gate. We're standing at the gate. Finally, some other people who said they were supposed to be in Guatemala had shown up. After the flight time, after officially we had missed the flight, they said, okay, we're boarding now for Guatemala. And then just a guy walked up at the door and said, okay, Guatemala followed me. And we walked through another line. We actually crisscrossed lines. One was going to uh, Kikalka and we went to, uh, to, to Guatemala and just walked through each other, all going out the same gate, just following two different people. No guidance, no nothing. Walked all the way down and got on our flight. We had the same plane, same crew that we had two, two days ago coming in in the other direction. So once we were, you know, all at that point, it was all super simple, straightforward and comfortable. And if you had done this more than once, you'd be like, okay, this is how it works. I know what to do. I know what to look for. But doing it the first time, there is nothing to indicate that you're doing things right and no way to double check anything, no way to know your flight hasn't left, no way to know if it's on time. Like there is no double check short of just annoying the people at the desk over and over again. Wait, you said you'd call me, but you didn't call me and the flight's supposed to have left. Oh yeah, no, it hasn't gone yet. Oh my gosh, right? And like, why? No reason, just, they, they're just disorganized. So got onto the flight and had a nice hour-long flight out to Guatemala City. I will know on the way, you could really see the smoke over a lot of Guatemala. It's in the news right now that there's a lot of wildfires going on in Guatemala. We were able to see that smoke. It really was pretty heavy. In the city, we didn't notice it too much, but on the flight, you really saw it uh, a little bit to the east. So I got into Guatemala, and of course, by that time, it's like uh, uh, new, a little bit after noon, like 12.30, maybe pushing one o'clock. And they had been really busy. So going through Guatemala, I had done my uh, online check-in, so they had all my um, aduana, my, my custom stuff. And when I came through, it was like, because Guatemala is so easy to go through immigration, really fast. They stamped my stuff, got to customs, and they were so tired of people, they just waved everyone through. So that was fantastic. Last time, it took me an easy 30 minutes. This time, not even one. It was it was as fast as you could walk the line. And so I was just straight out into the city. Now, Guatemala City, as we mentioned the other day, has Uber. But unlike the other day, 
I have Uber now. <laughs> I had it loaded on my phone. I was ready to go because I had used it the other day. So I was able to call a taxi. So I walked out of the airport, probably didn't need to, but I walked out, went out to the main road just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, looked, sat kind of on the edge of the road and looked at a map and, and decided where I wanted to go. I actually found a Cadejo Brewing Company, which if you watched my show a couple days ago, I went to Cadejo in San Salvador. It's a Salvadorian uh, brewing company, but they have a location here in Guatemala City. I had some places I wanted to go. The places that I wanted to go had closed, so I didn't know where to go. So this gave me a place I knew I'd be able to sit and relax and it would be good for waiting for my flight. I have an eight hour layover today. So I really wanted to get out of the airport and do something, but this is fantastic. Getting out of Guatemala airport, this is Aurora, the main international airport in Guatemala city is the easiest of anywhere I've ever been. The airport itself is a bit of a mess, but it's small and easy to navigate. And it does have some food items and some shopping. So it's not bad, but it is really confusing, not Belize confusing, but really confusing. Watch my video from two days ago about how hard it was to get to Belize from that airport, and you'll understand a little bit. But overall, it went really well. Getting outside, though, just call an Uber. You're in the heart of the city. Literally, you're right in the dead center of Guatemala City when you get out of the airport. You can walk to a ton of stuff. If you're just looking for, like, American fast food or something, it's got to be, like, a 15-minute walk to Burger King, Denny's, Pizza Hut, places like that, uh, and all kinds of other local places, too. Like, there's just a lot, plus the zoo and some other things. But I wanted to go to Cadejo out in Zona 10, Zona de Ace, which is a little bit farther away. I called a taxi, cost like two, three dollars and took maybe 12 minutes. And I was out at Cadejo. They dropped me off. Super easy, super cheap. Walked in and I had the whole afternoon to hang out at a brew pub. It was not very busy. A few people were there for the uh, the Arsenal. Uh, no, that's not correct. The Manchester uh, Real Madrid game. Right. So it was a small number of people for that. We watched some TV. I had my phone. I picked a table. There's, you know, I had loads of empty space. It was really comfortable. Ordered a beer, ordered some fish tacos because the other night I had to get shrimp tacos because they were out of fish at uh, San Salvador. So that was great. I got to try those too. Tried some different beers that I tried the other night and uh, I just sat at a table. I was able to plug in my phone, popped up my laptop, got on the Wi-Fi, had nice fast Wi-Fi. I was able to work. I answered a ton of your guys' emails and comments on the show, got my phone fully charged, got things updated, uploaded whatever I could. I was pretty good at that point, but was able to actually be a little bit productive and relaxed all afternoon. Like it really couldn't have gone better for having a super long layover in Guatemala City. It was great. So after nearly five hours at the brew pub, uh, then I just uh, ordered a, an Uber. They were there in a couple minutes and it did take 40 minutes to get back to the airport because it was rush hour. And yes, technically I could have walked back in about 40 minutes as well, but then I had been sweaty and exhausted. I just wanted to take an Uber and as long as it wasn't gonna take longer, that was fine. But it was a little bit stressful because 40 minutes to get to the airport right around the corner. But I knew at any point I could jump out of the car and walk it if I absolutely have to and to kind of put a maximum limit on how late I could be. So it wasn't too bad, but it is an international flight technically. So you're supposed to be there three hours ahead. I didn't leave the the bar until about two hours and a quarter before my flight. So by the time I actually got there, it was only an hour and a half before my flight. But really, I walked into the airport, I was through security and up to my gate in probably five minutes. At most, it was 10. It was so fast. I wasn't like rushing. I was walking. I was focused, but I wasn't like briskly walking. I wasn't rushing. I wasn't doing anything to really speed it up. I was able to just walk through. They check your passport at the outside door. So don't be surprised. Just have your passport ready. They just want to know you're like, have your passport. Uh, you follow the signs to international departures. They change like where it is every day. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, and then uh, you have security. Security is super fast in Guatemala, like crazy fast. And then it's not that big of an airport. So it is a little bit, you could walk for a few minutes, uh, but most of the gates are relatively close to where you come through security. So it's really not bad at all. Uh, so I got there, even getting to the airport, which is an hour and a half before my flight, I was at my gate well over an hour before my flight anyway, and was nice and relaxed and had nothing to worry about there. I will note, uh, this is where, so both Belize and Guatemala do not issue US currency. So if you're trying to get US cash for any reason, these countries will basically make it impossible. They're not, it's not actually impossible. You can't like go to an ATM or anything to do that. So just be aware, should you be traveling, this could come up and you'll see why, but it didn't end up being an issue. Uh, so I flew off to El Salvador pretty late in the evening after having hung out all day in Guatemala. Uh, that went 
super easy. We got up in the air and the pilot's like, our flight will be 20 minutes. <laughs> this is crazy. Come down in, uh, in San Salvador and I had a really fast layover there. Not really a layover. By the time I was getting off the plane, it was two minutes after boarding was supposed to have started on my flight. It was not a big deal. It's a small airport. You can get to places quickly and they obviously say boarding long before they close the gate. So I was not worried in the least. But I did want to get to an ATM. I was unable to find an ATM during the time I had there, which was not a lot of time. And I only went so far afield. And I didn't ask people because I basically ran down the corridor, looked as far as I felt comfortable looking, and then ran back. The reason you want to give yourself a little extra time in San Salvador is they do this extra security check. I mentioned this the other day too. When you're heading to Guatemala, you get it. When you're heading back to Nicaragua, you get it. Basically, every gate within San Salvador airport is its own little mini security zone. So you need to go through a luggage check as you go to your gate. So just be prepared that if you're uh, in, in other airports, when we say you're at your gate, you're in like a gate area. You might be across the hall. You might be shopping in the area. Maybe you've scoped out your gate, but you may not be actually sitting at your gate. It's kind of what we mean. But in San Salvador, to be at your gate means you've gone through the security checkpoint and are now locked inside an area that is just your gate. You're allowed to leave, but then you have to go through the security again. So it, basically, you want to get to your gate, get through that security, because that line can be 10, 15, 20 minutes long, and, and then you're in the area, and then you can wait for them to call you or whatever. It does make it a little bit of a mess just because of trying to fit everyone into these spaces, but it does give you a lot more security and keeps people from milling about and dealing with people who are seriously late because they didn't think they needed to be at the gate or whatever. I think overall, it improves the workflow, but it does create some differences that you may need to be aware of. So I got in there, no problem. Uh, it was a little bit confusing because our checkpoint was for two gates. And so you'd be like, is this the one for, for Nicaragua? They'd be like, no. And someone else would be like, yeah. And you're like, okay, there's nothing labeled, right? So got in, uh, got on the flight, flight's about 40 minutes, uh, went really smoothly, got really great views of uh, Corinto and Las Penitas and Pono Loya. It's amazing how easy it is now that I live here to pick them out from the air and see every house and every road and every, like we have crystal clear views. I got into Managua at uh, just a few minutes after 11 o'clock at night. It's been a very long day of travel. Remember, I got up at 6 o'clock this morning and basically did nothing but work my way towards the airport for the entire day. Uh, once we landed, um, had no problems coming into Nicaragua, went really smoothly. Now, this is worth noting. You have to have $10 U.S. currency coming into Nicaragua. And I knew this, which is why I was looking for the money ahead of time. Could not find it. Now, I had Nicaraguan cash, and I do know at times they have accepted this in the past, but they frown upon it. They're, they really don't want to take it. But I was prepared that I, at least I had that. But I've had now several days since the last time I had access to American cash. And it hadn't really occurred to me when I was leaving, because I was doing all this in a rush, that I should carry the cash for entry with me. Uh, so that's something just be aware of. There's signs everywhere. So you're not going to be surprised as you go up, but you need to have $10, hopefully in exact change, as you approach uh, Nicaraguan immigration. So I got up, I was ready with my Cordoba, and I talked to him, and I said, you're going to hate me, but I don't have American cash, I only have Cordoba, but he said, and this is a surprise to all of us, he just makes a sweat, he's like, I'm like, you take tarjeta? He's like, yeah. So I was able to give him a credit card, and no problem at all, so you no longer need cash. I would still bring it, I'm sure they prefer it, $10 exact is just easy, but if you don't have cash, don't panic, you can use a credit card to come across the border now, so that was, that was really good. So immigration for me was really quick and easy. Uh, got in, went to customs. That was quick and easy. It was a little bit of a line, but there was no hassle. Just put your stuff on the walk right through. Walked right out. Leo was waiting for me around the corner. He popped right up, picked me up. And we had about a two and a half hour drive home. Traffic was really slow tonight. And we had people swerving all over the road, like really, really falling asleep people out on the roads tonight. So it was about... Uh, two o'clock ish when we pulled in here to my home and uh, boy was I tired it was a very long day it was almost exactly 20 hours from the time I got up and got moving uh, to head up until I was actually walking in the door the kids stayed up so I got to see them we did our New York Times uh, connections and uh, wordle puzzles that we try to do every day I had done my uh, uh, my duolingo while I was at uh, the the brew pub so I knew that was good I didn't have to worry about that uh, and uh, the dogs were going crazy as I walked in and I opened up the door to my bedroom and Dominica's asleep and the dogs were fast asleep with her. They'd gone to bed probably four hours before and the light fell across Mia's face, my big dog. And she looked up and as soon as she recognized me, just her huge tail just whap, 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 whap against the bed. So she woke up Clive. She woke up Dominica. So everybody knew I was home because the dog was so exciting. Both dogs jumped up, just jumped all over me. And then I had to open the doors and they ran outside and, and were just very, very excited that I was home. Uh, I did a little bit of work, maybe 15 minutes because I was not quite ready to fall asleep, even though I was super exhausted. 
and uh, and called it a day. So not the most exciting stuff for the material, I guess, today, but sometimes travel days are worth breaking into because there is a lot of good information about what does it actually take? How do I handle it? It is, I think, interesting how cool San Salvador is and how many options are there. They do have food courts and, and some good options, like really nice stuff. Uh, I didn't have time to explore that this direction, but I did the other. Uh, Guatemala has less, but a bit, and the ability to go around the city is just the best ever. Uh, and because it's so quick and easy to get in and out of the airport and your downtown, and there's so much to do in Guatemala City, if you have even a two or three hour layover, you might want to consider popping out of the airport. Just be aware the traffic could be really bad coming back and not going out. So make sure you allow a little bit of time for that. But other than that, the ability to just run out and explore the city is amazing. And especially if you have luggage that is checked through during your, your layover and you don't have to deal with it. I did. I had to take mine with me. That really, that's why I just went to a pub and stayed there. Otherwise, I might have gone out for a walk and explored the city or done something a lot more energetic, but I didn't want to have to carry my luggage around and I didn't have anywhere to stick it. So, because I didn't have a hotel room or anything, but you really can. Most airports, I would be like, you'd be crazy to leave an airport during a layover. Talk about stress and problems. It's just not worth it. Guatemala is totally different and, and is the only exception that I've experienced where I would, without question, any serious amount of time, I would just leave. No problem. So that is important. Um, entering stuff into Nicaragua. There's a few little tricks, but flying around this area really isn't that hard. It's mostly just finding the right flights. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, it would be great if you posted this somewhere on social media, told someone, friends, family, something about the show, helped get the word out there, get them watching. Once you're hooked, hey, you get hooked, right? We're, we're a very different channel. It's a little bit, a little bit of a fun format to be able to get involved with something every day with travel and relocation all the stuff we do here, right? We're really eclectic. So let someone know about the show. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. Now I'll do my best to pop up four episodes on the screen. If you could do your best to click on one of them and just help the algorithm get tricked into thinking this is an awesome show, that'd be fantastic.